Good morning. How is everybody? This is Doc Robin, and I'm here with your weekly weather forecast. It is Monday, July 11th, 2022. And guess what? It's a new week, and it feels really good this week. I don't like the word juicy, let's be honest. It's one of my least favorite words with my ADHD brain. You play that over and over in your head a couple of times and forget it. But what I will say is that this, <laughs> for lack of a better word, this week does really have kind of a, a thick, softly intense feeling to it that I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. There's a full moon happening in a couple of days. As you know, I'm not an astrologer. I don't even play one on TV. I used to read my horoscopes when I was a little kid religiously every day in the newspaper, along with far side comics, of course. I mean, after all, who doesn't when you're a Gen Xer? But what I will say this week is that because this energy feels so alive and so expansive, we do have some opportunities coming into the week to make the most of this energy of the pull towards the things that we're really wanting to create in our lives. And I went ahead last night, actually, I was guided to pull cards for today. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into that. Um, these are coming from Starseed Oracle by Rebecca Campbell right here. And um, I love my, my Oracle cards. Do you use Oracle cards? I'd love to know which ones are your favorites. If you're new to my community, welcome. And please say hello in the comments so I can say hi back. If you've been here for a while, welcome back. I love doing these weekly weather reports. It's one of my favorite parts to start the week. So here we go. As I said, big energy this week, expansive energy this week. There's some movement happening as well. Certainly there's summer vacation plans here in the Northern Hemisphere, but there just is this time... I've referenced this earlier, just this golden summer. It's a golden summer for us. If you want to take advantage of that, if you choose to take advantage of it, the energies are definitely there for you to do so. Remember that in order to take advantage of these energies, it starts with your decision to do so. That's it, just your decision to do so. So the first card that I drew is about the messenger. It's about the messenger. And the, mess the message of this mes messenger card is to bring harmony, bring harmony to your lives, bring harmony to the masculine and feminine characteristics that we each have access to internally. In fact, I don't know if you know this, but the research on gifted and talented girls has been showing this for generations. Actually, this started, this research started in the 1930s where researchers really started looking at masculine and feminine characteristics in gifted girls, Gift, uh, gifted meaning people who have fast brains in our heads, we can process information quickly, make sense of things and know what to do about them. And you know what the research shows is that gifted girls are more like, this is the old research, gifted girls are more like boys than they are like average girls. What I take that to mean in the 21st century is that we actually have more balance in our systems anyway to begin with. So we're more harmonized in the masculine and feminine than, than most people are. And I think that's a good thing. It's a good thing to start with as we look at harmonization. So you can just start this week by asking, how can I even bring more harmonization to my life? How can I harmonize with the experiences and the feelings and, that, and the frequencies that I most want to experience? And there's a peaceful quiet that can set in when you make the decision to harmonize. It's like, you know, right before a conductor begins the orchestra, she'll have the first violin or the first flute or the first clarinet play a note. And the entire orchestra tunes to that note. But then the next step of that is a harmonization. So everyone will drop into their own key, the key of the piece that they're playing, for example, the first note. And everyone in the orchestra will harmonize. So everyone's in tune first, 
and then everyone harmonizes to each other. So if you can think about that for your life this week, I think that'll be really helpful for you as we go into this, this big week, harmony. The next card is about perspective. This came up in a couple of my private sessions last week with some of the execs that I work with. Coming into their sessions, they would say things like, why is this happening to me? Or how do I sort this? Or why am I sick right now? Or why am I having the struggle right now? And it, a lot of times it comes from a place of struggle. And it also comes from the perspective that something is happening to you. One of the great shifts that you can do for yourself as a leader, and if you've been around with me for a while, you already know this, but it bears repeating. One of the best things that you can do is to make the shift from why is this happening to me to how is this happening for me? Or another way of putting that is why is this happening and how can I, how can I learn from this? What is it there here for me to master? Anything that's going to shift you out of that old victimology of why is this happening to me? And it kind of creates the conditions for you to contract, to huddle in, to kind of stop moving forward, stop expanding. So when we're shifting perspective, we're just asking better questions. We're asking different questions. And that perspective, let's take sickness for a, for a second, because I know several of us, myself included, are re still recovering from either colds or flu or something like that, or just general mal malaise that has kind of been going around the last couple of weeks. So if I'm asking myself, why is this happening to me? Then I kind of get in that old medical model set of I'm the patient, I need a I need somebody to rescue me or I need somebody to fix me. And I feel debilitated. I feel overwhelmed. I feel frustrated. In some cases, I feel like I might even just like want to just stay in my bed forever and not ever get up again. So often what I find is that when you're awake and you're walking this path of paying attention to the energies of understanding and using your intuition of opening up to the best of what is possible of actualizing your hopes, dreams, and greatest desires. When you're walking that path, you can't also simultaneously be in the path of why is this happening to me? So I know that for me, when I've been sick recently, uh, what I've recognized is that I also have been going through major energetic activations and shifts in my system. I've gotten new insights about the work that I'm meant to be doing, who I'm meant to be supporting, um, how my business is going to be growing and expanding this year and beyond. Um, there's been a lot of new, new energies coming in. And in fact, I think that one of the effects of all of the new energies coming in is my body has kind of rebounded and been a little bit shell-shocked about it. So my body needed a little bit of time to acclimate. My body needed a little bit of time to shift out of anything that maybe no longer was serving it. Um, and my body needed a little bit of time just to rest in order to integrate the new energies and awarenesses that have come through. Maybe that's happened for you as well. And if, if you weren't aware of that being a possibility and you've also been sick, Maybe take a look at that. What else is going on in your life? Were you getting ready for a big leap in your, in your organization? Did you get a raise and a promotion? Um, did you just land a major client? There's usually something that accompanies an illness besides just, you know, a, the 3D version of why people get sick because there's something in the air or something going on. So take a look at that. That's a shift in perspective that's really going to support you. All right, that's the next one. The following card is this one. It says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And this is about writing past wrongs, uprooting those deep-seated hurts, the deep-seated unforgiveness. I love to 
practice forgiveness, but it's also one of the hardest things to practice as well, because I think still in our humanness, in our humanity, we want to hold on to those past grievances because they energize us. We want to hold on to those past harms to from other people and from ourselves as well in order to you know learn something from it to not do it again to remember to remember you know there's that old saying i'll forgive you but i'll never forget and is that really forgiveness so this is a really good week to take at take a look at where do i need to forgive where do i need to forgive myself where do i need to forgive other people when i practice forgiveness there's one uh, Hawaiian, ancient Hawaiian practice. It's called Ho'oponopono. You might be familiar with it, but if you're not, it's a practice of just bringing to mind that person, that experience, that situation that is asking for forgiveness or that you know that you should and ought to forgive. And there are four phrases. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I forgive you. Thank you. And you just say it over and over and over as you hold this, the energy or the memory of that experience or that person in your heart and in your mind's eye. And over time, as you practice this, it doesn't happen all at once, but over time, as you practice it, it really does create a release, this, the, the transformation, a different perspective on the situation or on the, purpose, or on the person even on yourself. So Ho'oponopono is a really good forgiveness practice. Another really beautiful forgiveness practice comes out of mindfulness, and that is the loving kindness meditation practice. You can, again, bring that person or that situation into your heart and mind and just say, may you be peaceful, may you be happy, may you be free from inner and outer harm, May you care for yourself joyfully. And you can do that for yourself. You can do that for others as well. It's a tough one. Doing a mindfulness, a, a loving kindness practice like that is tough because it asks you to sit with, to be with whatever that experience was without judgment as best you can, with compassion as best you can. And in so doing that practice, again, your perspective changes on it just by paying attention to it in a new way. Your perspective changes. Oh, itch in my eye. So those are two practices that you can try if you feel something needs to that needs to come up to be forgiven, something that's kind of a burr under your saddle or a bee in your bonnet. Take a look at that and, and make a commitment to, to do the practice this week and see what, see what emerges as a result of that. All of this, all of this, the harmonization, the, the shifts in perspective and the forgiveness, the I'm sorry piece, all co coalesce into one big kind of ta-da moment this week. And that has to do with this portal that's opening. Portals are doorways, they're passages into new spaces. Um, some would say new dimensions even, but definitely new perspectives or new ways of being in the world. So I always like to think about the full moon as a portal. It's just as an opportunity to step into something that is new or to actualize something that I've been focusing on in terms of my own actualization practice. So as you are doing all of this work around perspective and forgiveness and harmonization, just know that all of that is pointing you in the direction of this new opening, this new doorway, this new portal. And do you want to know something? I just found this out. I forget where my source was. I'll have to look back at this. There's some research on this. It's called the doorway effect. I was reading about it because of the work that I'm doing with people with ADHD who are spiritual entrepreneurs, leaders, and CEOs. And the doorway effect is this effect. You know how like when you're going to get something in the kitchen and you're walking from your office to the kitchen and you walk into the kitchen and you're like, your mind goes blank and you're like, why did I even come in here? I don't remember. That's the doorway effect. And what science is showing is that 
when you cross through a doorway, when you cross through a portal, there's like a memory wipe that happens in your brain in order to prepare you for what's next. And in some cases, that's not such a great thing because then you have to stand in the kitchen for, you know, 30 seconds and, and track back to why you went there in the first place. But when it comes to this portal this week, I like the doorway effect for us. I like being the idea of being swept clean, of having a reset, a cosmic reset, and being able to step into what's next with a clean palate, a clear heart, and an open mind. So that's our message for this week. Get ready for the portal. Prepare yourself for the portal. And listen, I know I've listened to broadcasts like this. I've listened to energy reports and I am a grown up smart girl. I have a good brain in my head. I kind of at some, even sometimes now I kind of look to things with a skeptical perspective and that's cool. I think that it's important to be discerning about the information that you're receiving for sure. And I always remember what my teachers have taught me is that truth has a frequency. So take what serves, leave the rest. This is just perspective. It's not, it's, and it, it's perspective and it's guidance. It's not telling you what to do. Don't abdicate your power to me or to anybody else. That probably goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. And lastly, lastly, the other thing that I'll say is that if you want to, if you want to play around with this, to start really learning how to harness the, the energies that are available to you, just make the decision to do so. Make the decision to play around with it. Make the decision to experiment with it and see what happens. You get nowhere if you just close off. Not that you would, but there are some who would. Close off, but just be open. Be curious. See what happens as you allow yourself, allow your highest levels of consciousness to guide you this week through this beautiful energy portal that's opening up. All right. Until next week, I'm Doc Robin. If you're not a member of the Actualization Zone, head over to Facebook, type Actualization Zone into the search bar and you will find us there. It's your place to be if you are an intuitive, intelligent leader and you're awake and you're wondering what's next and you're ready willing and able to create a new world for yourself and other people. We are here for you. All right. Until next time.